It is the end of an era. It is the end of an epoch. It is the end of tooth. Thank you. Look at me. I got my tooth back. I got my tooth back. <laughs> this is really not a video. This is just a speaking test because it feels weird to speak. Um, first of all, I have to do my S's slightly further back on my palate. S which is a bit weird to get used to. And secondly, I haven't figured out how to do TH sounds yet. The, 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 I can do that, the, that, 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 ah, that. You see, I forgot, you gotta stick your tongue out. I can do that. I can do that. This and th thousands of them. Thousands of them. What's the other TH with a th, not a the? The, th. Th? It's weird. I'm getting used to it. Um. <coughs> So that's the thing. Secondly, I need to... Anyway, that's the thing that I did. I got my tooth fixed, finally. Um, so I'm going to be talking weird for a little bit until I figure it out. It feels incredibly strange to have a tooth again. Um, I feel kind of sick. I don't know why. Maybe I didn't get enough sleep. Maybe, I'm, maybe I got the, the, the good old-fashioned Rona. Um, who knows? Maybe it's just a regular illness. Maybe I ate something weird. I didn't put too much mayo in my chicken sandwich this morning. It wasn't a crazy amount, but it was a bit too much. Um, now, what I'm doing right now is fixing something <laughs> that I did yesterday. Because yesterday... I scheduled two videos. I scheduled Friendship Ended with Firefox and I scheduled um, Making an Omelette on a Rainy Day. But normally I schedule my videos for 5 pm and I accidentally scheduled them both for 5 am. Fortunately, the Friendship Ended with Firefox video came out at 5 am and I noticed that I'd put it as 5 am and so I've fixed the other one. But that video came out at 5 am instead of 5 pm. Speaking of which, there were lots of comments on that video. I already responded to one, which was about um, um, the the other thing. What was it? Um, mini tube, mini tube. But um, there's a bunch of comments on this video. People are people are going crazy on this video, especially Ava Avery Senso and Michael Polish name. <laughs> I assume it's Polish because it's got a bunch of Z's in it and no fucking vowels. Zupaniak. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce your name. I'm just gonna call you Michael. Um, so I thought I would go just respond to some comments because why not, eh? Uh, so why do you want to open M videos in MPV so much though? Resource usage? To which I've already sent so respond responded. Video played in browser windows is generally slower, in part because the browser also has to look, render the rest of the page. MPV's purpose is one and only one to play videos way cozier, to which Michael replies, Not really slower, I would say, but I get what you're saying, the resource usage. Well, it might not be slower on your gaming PC, or whatever the fuck you use, but on my... How old? 14? You have that 12? 12, 12-year-old 12 ThinkPad, it is noticeably slower. Um, not that much, but it is noticeable. But that's not the only reason I open things in MPV. First, firstly, is the bloat and the resource usage. So, uh, YouTube obviously has to render a whole web page. The YouTube player itself is not particularly resource efficient, whereas MPV is very nice, minimal, only plays the video, plays it well, and doesn't take up as much RAM. Or CPU usage, that's good. So that's one positive of playing things in MPV. Another positive is to bypass the brain worms. Um, YouTube as a website is designed to manipulate your psychology, to keep you on the website for as long as possible, to keep you clicking recommended videos, to get you to read comments and interact and so on and so on. Um, basically trying to psyop you and get you, um, you know, into the YouTube ecosystem. I want to avoid that. My brain is very easily hacked, you know, just like all humans, we're fallible and 
big tech companies know how to use our fallible human instincts against us. MPV is designed to be used by humans. There is none of that annoying bullshit. Thirdly, SponsorBlock. For some reason, SponsorBlock stopped working after, uh, recently. I think a YouTube update broke it. It still works on some other browsers, but it doesn't work on Firefox, and obviously it doesn't work on Cube Browser because Cube Browser doesn't do add-ons. But it still works in MPV, so I can use sponsor block MPV and skip all my sponsors. And speaking of blocking sponsors, um, this wasn't so much of a problem in Firefox, but it is a problem in Cube Browser, which is that you, you, Cube Browser can't block ads on YouTube. YouTube ads are very persistent, and uh, Cube Browser's ad block, even though I'm, I, I've been fiddling it with it for a while, and I've been doing research, it seems like no one can figure out how to block ads fully on YouTube. There are ways to make the ads less intrusive, but there's no way to completely block the ads like uBlock does in Cube Browser. Unless you open things in MPV, because when you use MPV to open YouTube videos, it skips all ads. Also, very useful, because another thing MPV does for YouTube videos, I don't know if you've noticed, but recently Google has been trying to expand their analytics program by requiring a government ID or credit card to watch age-restricted videos. I don't think this has hit all around the world yet, but it has come to my attention. It has come to the UK. It's happened here. I've seen it on my, on my browser where I go to open a YouTube video and it says age verification required. And then you click a video and it says you want to verify by government ID or by credit card? And I think to myself, I do not want to give Google either of those things. Fuck you. Uh, MPV bypasses that. You can just open the video at MPV and you don't have to give them your ID or credit card. Is this what's making us? This doesn't sound good. Can you guys hear that? It's making a strange noise. I feel like that's a bad thing. Is this about to explode? Um, oh well, it should be good, I'm just going to unplug it, because that noise doesn't sound good, I mean, I'm sure it's nothing, sorry about that. Okay, so, um, another reason for using MPV is um, a philosophical and privacy-oriented one. Obviously, when you open a YouTube video in MPV, YouTube can't collect analytics about what videos you're opening and stuff like that, that's where you're good, it's, you're relying less on Google services and relying more on an innate player. You know, back in the early days of the internet, back in the 90s and early 2000s, people didn't used to watch videos in video players on their browsers, they used to watch them in things like Real Player. That's how it used to be, that's how you used to stream video, you used to stream it into another piece of software that was only for streaming video. Um, MPV, well, it's for streaming but also playing video, but it's also the best video player in the world. It's just, um, very, very well written software. It's it's just amazing. I love it so much. I love how how fucking responsive it is and how feature rich it is and extensible it is. Like you can just, it's um what is it? Just the, the, like the scripts and stuff. I for, I forget what the scripting language is, but um, very extensible. Loads of loads of stuff you can do to make MPV work exactly how you want it to work, which is really good for me. Um, and you know at this point I have lots of muscle memory for it. It's just a very functional player that is more functional than the YouTube player. And, you know, with all those other added benefits that I also mentioned before. So that's why I like to play stuff in MPV. Um, those are all the reasons. Oh, there is one more reason, which is related to the one I just said. And also related to the first point about resource usage. So, um, another thing about this computer, it can't handle 60 FPS video. If you play a 60 FPS, anything, not just video, anything in, in 60 FPS, it will shit the fucking bed. The, the CPU usage goes all the way up, the fan starts trying its hardest to cool the shit down, but the old degraded thermal paste on the CPU can't keep up, it gets really hot, it overheats, it's fucked, you can't place, and the video itself will like lag and stutter to the point where it's unwatchable. Can't play 60 FPS video. I've tried on multiple occasions to do some similar things. Also can't play anything higher than 1080p video, can't play 2K or 4K or anything like that, same thing happens, the, the memory usage goes through the roof, the, it gets hot, the fan is going quick, you know, all of these things, um, can't handle any of that. In YouTube, you can set it to only play 480p video, 
but as soon as you go up to 720 or above, it will automatically use 60 FPS. So you can select 720p, but if you select 720p by default, and that's in your cookie or whatever, but in your settings, so it always loads at 720p if it can, it will also always load at 60 FPS. And there used to be an add-on that fixed this so you could play 720p not 60 FPS. That add-on broke at some point. But you know what you can do is you can set that as a pre you can set that in your MPV config file. You can just set it so they will always stream videos in 720p. Why 720? Because this monitor is not 1080p, so there's no reason to play videos in 1080p. Uh, it's just a waste of bandwidth. So 720 is the highest that makes sense to play it in. Um, the the actual resolution of the screen is just fucking weird. But it's yeah, there's no point. It's not big. It's not over 1080 so yeah um so i just have a thing in my mpv.com in my my dot config mpv um whatever uh which says when you're streaming videos limit the maximum uh, re uh resolution to 720p and limit the frame rate to under to i think 30 fps or 35 points from the fps i don't remember um but yeah, and I just have that, and so all YouTube videos play like that, all videos from not YouTube play like that, and my computer never gets fucked. Isn't that great? It is great. Uh, okay, so that's the first thing. Why do I play YouTube videos in MPV? It's resource usage, but also all of those other things. Okay, um, I'll continue with Michael's comments, and then I'll go over to a various sensors comments. Uh, Minitube scans every channel too for you new videos, but it actually keeps a database. Oh wait, we already did this. I'd expect, yeah, really tubes seem to work fine. Um, I do have minor problems with it, but honestly, out of all the options, Minitube is the best I've seen so far for a YouTube, like a, a, a YouTube client on, on Linux. Um, it's not as privacy respecting as Freetube. Uh, Freetube is better in a privacy aspect because it will um, stream all your videos through Invidious and you can even make it use a VPN or Tor so on and so on, it's very privacy respecting, um, but uh, Minitube is also seems pretty good, it also seems less, it's, it seems lighter, I mean it is called Minitube, it seems better for running on old devices and stuff, so that's quite nice, and you can import subscriptions in Minitube too, which is awesome. Um, uh, to copy a URL you just left click big ass URL bar and control C, so not so much fidgeting. I suppose that's true, but that's still not as fast as just just that. That's that's just the fastest you can possibly do, right? You can't get faster than that. I mean, I'm sure it's not a hassle if you're really used to left-clicking the URL bar. The other thing is my Firefox Rice, the URL bar is fucking tiny and in the corner because I really never need to see it that often. Uh, so, you know, that is way more annoying than just double-clicking, double-pressing Y. Uh, the one-line installation is just getting a shell script just directly getting a shell script, YTF is a shell script apparently, it is, uh, from a website and placing it as executable and changing the conditions to make it executable, nothing fancy other than it can actually put malware directly on your PC if someone changes sources on the website, but it's from GitHub so it's not likely to happen, epic moment. Okay, I understand, I could have probably gathered that if I'd actually bothered to read the one line installation, but I just saw it, it said one line installation, I, I was just like, this must be magic, and then never looked into it. Uh, I'm sure it's just like doing, you know, trimod and stuff. Uh, about file browser, have you tried NNN? Didn't I mention NNN in the video? Because I said that Ranger crashes when you open things, I might try NNN. Um, I haven't tried it yet, but I have thought about switching, uh, but I haven't done it, because Ranger is mostly usable for almost everything. It, it, it just deleting files is the only thing that doesn't that crashes, and that I don't need to delete files very often. So, and if I do, I can always just do it in a terminal, like you know, w with with Bash, because I also often don't even use a file browser. I just use Bash to navigate around my computer, because uh, it's perfectly fast with tab completion. Like, honestly, a file. File browsers are <laughs> file browser browsers are bloat. Let's be wrong. Let's be honest here. Why not just use Bash? If you can type fast and you have tab completion, you know, or ZSH if you really want to have good tab completion, which I don't use, but I've been considering switching. Um, you know, what you, file browsers are bloat, but I do occasionally need a file browser. So you know, I I'm not a perfect human being who avoids all bloat yet. So I still use a file browser, and. 
yeah, there's not really any reason they haven't switched to NNN. Um, maybe one day I will, if Ranger gets particularly annoying, but so far Ranger is not that annoying. Uh, JKL is insanely unnatural to me. Scrolling with L, you don't scroll with L, you scroll with J. Uh, scrolling with L and semicolon is way too slow because I'm using at least two used, least used strong fingers and I need to spam the, those. That's not how you scroll. You scroll with J and K. I don't know why, I don't know what, I don't know what sort of vim you're using, but you do not scroll with L and semicolon. You scroll with J and K. Um, I don't know, I don't know what that's about. Uh, C. Heskin says this dude Mike will spit in, which is true. Uh, and the good, okay, now, now let's read other people's comments. So Avre Senso says, I'm bound to Firefox because it's the only browser with extensions that cater to my tab hoarding tendencies. Degenerate. Uh, can't browse the web without vertical tree style hierarchical tab organization. It's the only overview style that faithfully represents the branching nature of hypertext. The claustrophobic horizontal flat list in the window title bar is mind-bogglingly crude, yet my preferred style is the exception to the norm. Why? Because we let normal people use computers. Now, I agree that tree style tabs would be good if you're a degenerate who opens more than five tabs at any time. But I never open more than maybe, like, you know, a few tabs at a time. I'd say maximum, absolute maximum ten. Um, because... I never need to because I'm smart and I can just remember things and if I have a million tabs I don't know why you would need a million I, I've seen I've met people I've met many people who have a million tabs open at all times I'm not that sort of person I'm a tab minimalist if I have more tabs open than I need I get anxious I'm like I, I gotta stop that gotta stop having these tabs open uh, because they, they, I, they're, they're looking at me they're looking at me and they're, 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 they're looking at me like you should be minimalist in your life. Ooh, they're like ghosts. They're looking at me, telling me to be more minimalist. Uh, I, 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 I think tab hoarders are, are absolute... It's uh, Tab hoarding, having a million tabs open is absolute degenerate behavior. And I'm very disappointed in you. Uh, I am a tab minimalist and I will remain a tab minimalist. But I do like tree style branching tabs. And guess what? They're working on it. Someone somewhere is working on it. I haven't finished researching this, but I, I looked it up just for you, and there is a big long thread on the, I think the GitHub, like a big long discussion on somewhere uh, of cute browser devs talking to users about tree style tabs, and someone, like, people are definitely working on it. I'm not sure if it's the devs themselves or third party, you know, other people who are working on ways to do it, but it's definitely being worked on. It might have even been done. I didn't finish reading the thread because I was reading it while I was waiting in the dentist and I got called up to get my tooth put in before I finished reading through the, to the bottom of the thread. So it might have already been done. Look it up. It, it might exist. I don't know if it exists, but it might exist. And if not, you know, learn Python because the cute browser is made in Python and you can, and the config file is also a Python file. So you could just put Python in the config file and it will run. Um, there you go. And yes, I know, it's being run in Python is cringe. Uh, okay, what am I doing? Uh, hold on. I don't know what I just did. Uh, you could use a general purpose RSS feed reader, reader as an alternative to the native YouTube subscription box you're after. Feed readers are purpose built to handle hundreds of feeds, channel subscriptions. You're right! An RSS feed is the ideal god tier solution to my problem. The problem being, and I will now wander around my room because this is a proper fucking rant. So back a long time ago, <laughs> back a long time ago, YouTube used to have something called the Subscriptions Manager page. You could go to a button called Manager Subscriptions and it would take you to youtube.com forward slash subscription underscore manager. And that subscription underscore manager page, if you scroll to the bottom of that, had a big button that said export subscriptions. You would export that and it would export all your subscription subscribe channels in a list that was readable by RSS readers and you could then just plug that into your RSS reader and it would work. It would just work and you could use RSS to browse YouTube and then they did the polymer design overhaul. I don't know if you remember it but it's the one that made YouTube look like it does now um, and it looks like shit. They did that, they removed the subscriptions manager page, but for a while, you, it still existed, you just had to type it into the URL bar manually, there just wasn't a link to it. And then they removed it, now it just 404s. 
So that doesn't exist anymore. Editing, no thank you here. It actually does still exist. The, the page still exists, but it no longer has the export subscriptions button. There is, in fact, a Chrome add-on that purports to re-add the export subscriptions button, but it just straight up doesn't work. So, uh, yeah, slight mistake in the video. The, the subscriptions manager page still exists, but it doesn't have the export subscriptions button anymore. There is no longer a way to export all your YouTube channels that you subscribe to to a format that is readable by an RSS reader natively. You can export it as a JSON file using Google Takeout, but that JSON file has a bunch of other information. I don't know how it works, but it's, you can't just plug that into an RSS feed. Um, it's too, it's got too much other shit. It's not just the RSS feed to meet your channels because the way YouTube RSS stuff works is that the each channel still can be piped to, like each channel, if you want to, for example, make an RSS feed, which let's say you're like, I want to get an RSS, like I want to pop up in my RSS every time Luke Smith uploads a video. What you would have to do is you'd have to go to his YouTube, you'd go to his YouTube channel, click on the videos tab, and that URL is the RSS thing. That URL of the videos tab is what you'd have to put in your RSS reader. Now the JSON file that comes when you do a export subscriptions thing doesn't lead you to that. It leads you to just their channel page. And so even if you did some like scripting magic and you removed all the other unnecessary metadata from that JSON file um, and you know cleaned it up with some some sort of script, which maybe which doesn't exist by the way. I looked on the internet and I couldn't find any scripts to do it. I didn't look that hard, but I looked and I couldn't find any scripts to do it. So I'd have to do it myself. Probably do it in Vim with a macro. You could do it, like it's reasonable. It's reasonably possible. There's there's probably a way to do it, but it's going to be a pain if you wanted to do it. But either way, you still can't put that into an RSS feed because it's not the videos tab on the channel feed. It's just their channel. It's not the videos tab on the channel. So you still can't put that in an RSS feeder. There is no way to export your YouTube subscriptions to an RSS reader unless you manually go through and copy paste every single URL. And that is the world's most annoying thing, and it pisses me off every single fucking day, because if I could just export, all of my problems would be fucking solved if I could just use RSS. And you used to be able to use RSS, but they removed the functionality, they made the website worse, they made the world worse, by removing the functionality to fucking what, have your YouTube subscriptions in RSS, and so I have to go and use fucking stupid things like Cute Browser, and MPV, and Minitube, and Freetube, and YouTube subscriptions, CLI and FZF, YouTube FZF, like, why? Just let me export shit to a fucking RSS feed. And maybe it's still possible. I've looked, but all the articles that I've found, I've gone onto the third page of Google to try and find shit like this. Whoever has to go to the third page of Google, I've gone to the third page of Google to try and find shit about this. And you know what? There's fuck all. All of it is about the subscriptions manager page from back in 20 fucking 13. None of it is works anymore. None of it fucking works. And I'm mad. I'm mad about it. So, well, why don't you just use an RSS feed? Because I fucking can't. I would if I could, but I fucking can't. There you go. That's the answer. There's my rant. There's my rant about RSS feed and YouTube. Okay, let's continue. I think the final comment is from the good student who says, you sub to Luke Smith? Of course I'm sub to Luke Smith. My friend, I use Linux. Of course I'm sub to Luke Smith. You can't, you can't be a, um, you, can't, you can't be a 4chan user and a Linux user and not be sub to Luke Smith. That's like blasphemy. Where else am I going to get my 60th video about Vim keybinds that I already know. Actually, that's not true. He, Luke Smith's very good at Vim. Uh, he knows a lot more. Well, he's not that good. You know, he likes to say he's very good, but I've seen better. I've seen people who are moving around real fast. Here's one reason Luke Smith is not that good at Vim. When he's moving around his documents, when you see him in his videos moving around his documents, you know what he does? He fucking holds down J and holds up down K. You're not supposed to do that supposed to, if you're moving long distances, use a number. So for example, 5J to scroll down five lines or something like that. He never does that. He does it sometimes, but almost always he just holds down J and K. Inefficient. <laughs> so, so there you go. Um, that's why Luke Smith is a Vim scrub, I guess. I don't know. He's more definitely better with Vim than I am. He knows a lot more about it than I do. Uh, but yeah. I think that's all the comments. Maybe I'll get more comments and then this video will be out of date. I don't know. Um, so yeah, I did try out Minitube, it was alright. 
now I, I also now there is actually a program that will probably do everything I want it to do, which is called it's literally just YouTube dash subscriptions. Now I need to check because I can't get it to install properly. I've I've been trying and I can't get it to install. I, I download I, I it just won't fucking work. It just won't work. But maybe maybe it's on the AUR. If it's on the AUR, it will install very easily, of course. So let's find out. Please? No, it's not on the AUR. Fuck. You're gonna have to forgive the construction noise, there's nothing I can do about that. Um, <clears throat> so I have, I have uh, received a comment on this video right here. No, this video right here. Uh, about why not just use Minitube? Well, I thought I tried Minitube before, but apparently I haven't, and now I remember why. Because it's not really the same exact use case as, as YouTube. In fact, if you go to Minitube's website, which I just had up, right, if you go to Minitube's website, uh, really, it's not, it says specifically, Minitube is not about cloning the YouTube website, it aims to create a new TV-like experience, which is not really what I'm about. But it does let you, you know, it does run privately, it does native stuff, and lets you import subscriptions. Sadly, it doesn't work. Uh, like, these are not all of the videos that have been posted, even though I have this sorted correctly. I'm pretty damn sure I have this sorted correctly. Maybe, maybe, what, what if I did it, what if it's last added instead? Oh, okay, never mind. It's last added, not last modified. So it does work. Okay, never mind. Um, not not a good reasoning. It's a bit buggy, as you can see. It's a bit buggy in my window manager. Maybe be better like. Nah, I'm not running it like that. Um. So it is a bit buggy. It's not the nicest thing in the world to use. I'm sure there's a dark theme in here somewhere. Um. You can. Oh, that's actually not bad. This isn't bad at all. You know what? This is not bad at all. Can you? Maybe, maybe there's some nice uh, video parts. Copy the YouTube link, float on top, compact mode. Now, oh, oh. But you see, now I don't know how to get the, okay, <laughs> good. Let's get rid of compact mode. Um, I don't know. This is an interesting, I mean, this is interesting. I don't really like the way it's set up, and I kinda do. Do you know what? I went into this very skeptical, but that was just because I was sorting it the wrong way. This might actually be good. Now, obviously, there's no Vim keys, and it doesn't open in MPV, but I'll, this video player is acceptable, and I haven't gone through all the preferences yet, so... Um, flow on top, can't open browser, double YouTube page, find video parts, uh, help, make a donation... So it's not particularly extensible, as far as I can tell. Playlist, videos, share, help. Okay, none of this is that interesting. Um, I want to toggle the menu bar back off. Okay, so like, hmm, hmm. I mean, this is a usable way to watch YouTube videos. There is no, like, progress bar? Which is really fucking weird. Again, I, I guess it wants to emulate TV where you just... It just plays all of your stuff. I should prob probably stop playing clips from Yokohama Kaidashi Kiko in case I get copyright straight. But um, it just, like, plays stuff like TV, I suppose. That's not really how I use YouTube at all. There is no progress bar. That's so weird. Like, why is there no progress bar? That's going to be really annoying to me. I'm s Other than that, this is nice, but... I would really like a progress bar, and I assume, although it does seem to be blocking ads, I assume it doesn't have sponsor block. Uh, I'm just going to take a big guess. And I didn't see anywhere, any way to do sponsor block. Um, what is this? Show updated. Okay. There's a browse feature, most popular. And then Minitube, you can search for so you see this isn't like awful this is this is borderline usable but the lack of like 
I have to say the lack of um, scrubbing bar, the lack of the lack of. My friend or husband. You can skip for oh, it's up. I'm so stupid. It's up here. I'm so. St that's embarrassing. I'm really stupid. I saw it before and I just Radio completely forgot to pay attention to it like an idiot. So this is not bad. I'm looking for the sponsor. I sh I am I'm pretty sure it's not going to skip the sponsor. The sponsors. Yeah, here we go. Sorry for the loud construction noises. Yeah, see, no sponsor block is a bit annoying, but other than, I mean, ideally, it would just be this. All I need is this. I don't need a, you ha to have your own fucking video player. Is there, if there's a way that I can just have this and then open it in MPV, it would be the perfect thing in the world. I would never need a web browser again. And also if it was in the terminal, that would be extra nice, but it's not. So Minitube is decent and I might use it occasionally, but it doesn't quite fill all of my uh, needs. So. It's close, it's close though, it's close. It's, it's a, a good suggestion. Okay, if this works, then no one, I'm looking at you, don't spite, can ever again tell me, and oh, by the way, this will work, it's just that it, it might not work first time, because <laughs> I'm probably gonna do something wrong. Also, I am supposed to be on a train right now, and I am not on a train right now, so, um, Make of that what you will, but I thought this was more important. If this works, then no one can ever tell me that Vim is worse than any other text editor ever. No one can ever tell me that, I mean, maybe Emacs can do this too, I don't know, but no one can ever tell me, oh, I use this text editor because it's better in any way. <laughs> no one can ever do that. You can only say, I use this text editor, yes, I know it's worse than Vim, but I can't be bothered to learn Vim. That's the only thing you can say. That's the only thing you can say, because that's the only legitimate argument you'll have if this works. So I'm going, I currently have, this is what I've been doing for the last like few hours, I figured out how to do it. I have a list of every single um, channel ID for every single um, fucking, <laughs> I'm so stupid, every single YouTube channel I'm subscribed to, right? Um, why did I just do X? I meant to do that. So there's 1,494 lines here. Right, that's a lot of channel IDs. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to turn all of these channel IDs into things that a RSS uh, reader can, you know, pass as an RSS feed. Now, instead of typing this, which is the 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 prefix I need to do, and then delete, 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 one thousand times. Instead of doing that, here's what I'm going to do. Q to record a macro. We'll map it on to D, because why not? Then, paste. Uh, one to the, fuck, one to the right. And then, now I should be doing this with, like, D, D, you know what, I will actually. If this fucks up, I'm going to be mad. In fact, you know what, just because I don't know if, it's, if I'm going to do this wrong, so I'm just going to do it manually. Because even though this is stupid, uh, delete, 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 delete. Okay, that's it. And now I press Q again. No wait. And then, um, I want to go down one line and to the beginning, which is dollar sign. Fuck. And to the beginning, which is zero. That dollar sign is the end of the line. Idiot. Zero. Okay, and then end the macro. Now, if I do at D, boom! You see this? It just did it automatically for me. I fucked up. I left the. I left the fucking. I thought I knew it wouldn't work first time because I fucked up. I deleted one fewer times than I should have. I left the fucking quotation mark in there. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> Q. 
D. Okay, here's what I want to do. Paste. Um, let's do use X instead. X, X, oh fuck, I shouldn't have used... Okay, well I'll just fix it in a second. Then we're going to have to retype the equal sign because I fucked up. Insert equals escape J zero Q. Okay, now at D. Bam! Automatically formats it for me. I just need to fix these two. So I'll just do those manually. Do you see how awesome that is? Do you see how awesome that is? If you don't understand, like, how fucking cool is that? Um... How, how awesome is that? Because now, look what I can do. 300 at D. Look at this. Look at the power of Vim in action. Look at the power of Vim in action. Um, let's go with another. 300,000. 3,000 at D. Fuck it, that'll do the whole thing. Look at the fucking power of Vim in action. Look at the fucking power of Vim in action, you fucking plebs. You fucking plebs. You can't fucking do this in Notepad++, can you? Plebeians. Look how cool I am. Look at how cool I am. Yes, I fucked up and I had to type in the, the um, equal sign each time, which probably made it, made it took a, a, a 0 0.01 second longer each time. That is now fucking done. I now formatted that. Dude, that would have taken me hours to do by hand. Hours of the worst possible work. I just WQ, it's done now.